When you're working with a library like TensorFlow.js that you just saw, there are three key ways you can use or create machine learning models. The first and easiest way to get started is to use a pre-made model. These are Emma models that someone else has already trained that you can reuse for the same use case. More often than not, you'll find that a model exists that already does what you need to do, that a company may have made publicly available, like recognizing the pose of a human body, for example, as shown on this slide. State-of-the-art models like this exist that have been trained on huge amounts of data and are typically very robust for that given task. Even better, they're usually well-tested in real-world situations, meaning they're probably very reliable too. Some state-of-the-art models even have associated model cards as shown on this slide, which you can check to see how it performs, the data it's used to train on, and if there's any known issues to be aware of when using it. In this course, you'll learn how to use pre-made models and while some are easier to use than others, all can save you a huge amount of time gathering training data and of course, the cost of development too. In fact, some state-of-the-art models can take weeks to train a working model using very expensive hardware before they're even ready to be used. Next up, you have transfer learning. This allows you to take certain pre-trained models and retrain them to learn a new similar task using your own data instead. If you have a model that's great at image recognition, maybe it can already recognize dogs, tables, and chairs, you can easily retrain that model to recognize, say, cats, as it already has the building blocks to find a variety of objects in an image, which you can then use to find other objects too. You actually saw this in action earlier in the course when you learned to use Teachable Machine. Here, you gave the model some new imagery from which it built upon its previous understanding of the world in order to solve the new task in a very fast way. Finally, you can choose to create your own models starting with a completely blank canvas using the TensorFlow.js APIs you saw before. This is useful when there's no existing model type that's suitable for your task at hand, or maybe the ones that do exist are not fast enough or take up too much memory. In this case, you can try to write and then train your own model architectures that can solve these problems. More often than not, few people will need to work at this level, but we'll touch on this later in the course to give you a taste of how this is done. In fact, most people will do just fine by building on top of pre-made models or use transfer learning for their custom data, enabling them to work faster and of course leveraging cutting edge research that is known to be battle hardened and known to work well for a given task. So in summary here, with TensorFlow.js, you can run existing pre-made models, retrain models via transfer learning to work on your own data, or run your own custom models completely from scratch, just like some of you might already be doing in Python, but in JavaScript or Node.js. Now, TensorFlow.js is also able to support the execution of other forms of TensorFlow models, either directly or through our command line converter, which might be useful if the research you want to use is initially in a different form. You'll learn more about dealing with conversion later in the course. Now with that, it's time to dive deeper into pre-made models to see what exists and to start writing some code to put them into action. So let's head on to the next chapter.